HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer has seen a revolution in the way that it's treated, especially in the last decade. And actually, in the last several years, we've seen the introduction of novel agents that have really moved the needle um, over to extending overall survival. I remember back presenting a Grand Rounds I think when I was a fellow at Duke about uh, Dennis Lehman having recently published a paper that HER2 positive breast cancer was an especially bad type of cancer and certainly in those years we certainly found that to be true. Now we have multiple other agents, we have antibody drug conjugates, we have oral agents, TKIs and Herceptin that are still uh, the mainstays of our treatment so it's really changed I would say almost 180 degrees from what it was back then. Antibody drug conjugates are a very interesting construct where you have an antibody that targets the cancer cell more than the normal cell and it carries along with it a toxin, so a payload. Currently we have um, trastuzumab m 10 we typically call uh, it as TDM1 and it's approved for the treatment of patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer and recently approved for patients in the adjuvant setting who have residual disease after neoadjuvant therapy. TDM1 was approved for metastatic breast cancer about six, seven years ago now um, because of results from the Amelia study which showed that TDM1 not only improved progression-free survival but improved overall survival uh, compared to lapatinib capecitabine. So this is now the gold standard second-line therapy. We have recent results relating to one such agent, trastuzumab direct TCAN. Uh, there was a phase two single arm study called Destiny Breast 01 which demonstrated a really impressive objective response rate and median progression free survival in very heavily pretreated patients. These were patients that were heavily pretreated and had uh, seen uh, quite a number of prior treatments. I believe the average number of prior treatments was uh, six and I think there was one patient that had 27 prior lines of therapy. I, don't, I can't even think of 27 lines of therapy for a patient. Destiny Phase two trial that evaluate that uh, efficacy of DS8201. This is a potent antibody drug conjugate with the um, an extremely exciting uh, potent payload. It's an eight to one ratio from drug to antibody. Um, it's essentially a topo one inhibitor. So in this trial was done to confirm the data from the phase one study where a heavily pretreated population was given the drug and was found to have a response rate of, of about 60%. So in this trial that they were able to show that the response rate was 60% in a very heavily pretreated population, that is striking. And what was more striking than that was the median progression free survival of 16 months, which is a high number and overall survival um, has not been reached and it's immature. This agent where updated data was presented uh, from a phase two trial uh, at San Antonio this year showed a 60% response rate in heavily pretreated breast cancer and the metastatic setting, HER2 positive. And this uh, response was actually quite durable because you could have a response rate of 60% if it lasts three months, doesn't, you know, not so helpful. This response rate actually lasted 15 to 16 months. And what was interesting is we usually see a big difference between duration of response in the responders and the progression-free survival. But in this case, almost everybody, I mean, lots of people responded, and even though the response rate by resist was 60%, almost all patients had shrinkage in their disease. So, interestingly, the duration of response and progression-free survival were relatively similar. In a heavily pretreated group of patients, that's quite impressive. A lot of my patients are heavily pretreated maybe not having so many options left now and this is looking like a great option for these patients and also in my um, ER positive breast cancer patients. The one thing they saw that was of particular significance were there some patients that had interstitial, interstitial lung disease and there were occasional fatalities with that when the study first came out. As the study went along they had learned how to mitigate this if it happens, that you need to pay attention to this and sort of take care of the patient right away if that happened. Interstitial lung disease tends to present as a dry cough that's persistent. It doesn't get better with whatever you do for it. Um, shortness of breath, particularly on exertion for these patients. 
and so what I have in one of my discussions with the patient is if you develop these symptoms is to let us know immediately I explain it to my patients that it's an inflammation in the lungs if we can catch it early then usually we can treat it easily and that would be is if I have a patient complaining of these symptoms I tend to stop stop drug and uh, work it up with a CT of the um, chest, which is the appropriate way. And then if there is evidence of um, lung disease there, then depending on how significant symptoms are, is using um, steroids and keeping patient off therapy till you can get them back to a baseline again. Tucatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor against HER2 selectively. And this is a very exciting drug that has been found to cross the blood-brain barrier so in the HER2 CLIMB study, patients uh, were enrolled and certainly were receiving the uh, drugs in the third line space, and half the patients had brain metastasis. The trial was a combination of Herceptin and Capecitabine, either with or without adding to catnip. Somewhat uniquely, they did allow patients with previously untreated or active brain metastases. Most other trials, almost every other trial that I've seen in the HER2 space, does not allow people with brain metastases in unless they have been treated and proven to be stable. In terms of the outcomes, you know, we saw that there was a significant gain in progression-free survival uh, with a hazard ratio of, of almost um, 0.5 uh, with an absolute gain of about 2.2 months. And this is in all patients, including patients with brain metastases. It looks like tucatinib is a more promising drug than other um, drugs in that class. Um, I love the benefit of uh, blood-brain barrier penetration, so that makes it very positive to use with patients. It also makes it more positive in trying to mitigate and deal with symptoms for the benefit of the efficacy of the drug with the patient. The SOFIA trial is a randomized study of margituximab with chemotherapy against trastuzumab and chemotherapy in patients being treated in the third line space and beyond. Margituximab has the same FAB fragment as trastuzumab, but as an antibody, the FC fragment has been altered to enhance immunity. And specifically, margituximab's FC fragment has been engineered to increase affinity for the activating CD16A receptor and decrease affinity for the inhibitory CD32B receptor. Margituximab resulted in a significant improvement in progression-free survival compared to trastuzumab with a p-value that has improved to point triple zero six, so highly significant, and a very good hazard ratio with a 24% relative improvement. The absolute difference was 1.3 months, which is small, but the p-value and, ha and uh, hazard ratio are very important in terms of assessing the benefit of margituximab over trastuzumab. The NALA study is a randomized study evaluating uh, neratinib with capecitabine versus the control of lapatinib and capecitabine in patients being treated in the third line space and uh, there was a primary endpoint, which was co-primary endpoint, PFS and OS. And they saw that neurotinib plus capecitabine was better than control with a PFS gain of about 2.2 months. And in terms of uh, overall survival, uh, there was not a, uh, a difference. Unfortunately, there are side effects associated with HER2 therapies, as there are with multiple other types of treatments. But you know, if you can explain that to a patient and help them uh, look for and understand potential side effects and actually try and uh, institute practices to mitigate those, patients tend to do much better on therapy, tend to then commit to their therapy and stay on their therapy um, consistently. And then we can tend to get long-term therapy um, in compliance with that. HER2 positive breast cancer comprises about 15 to 20 percent of all metastatic breast cancer, um, but HER2 positive breast cancer isn't one disease. We're beginning to see that there are subtypes even within that subtype.